My name is Richard Copus and I'm a fourth generation fruit and arable farmer from the Thames Valley based around Maidenhead. The UK is currently 70% self-sufficient in fruit and the sector is coming under increased pressure as it struggles with a shortage of seasonal labour and falling margins. This farm has been in cherry productions for over 100 years. My grandfather planted tall traditional trees whereby the fruit had to be picked by long ladders. My father planted dwarf varieties so the fruits could be picked from the ground before applying covering systems to protect the crops from adverse weather conditions. With the advancement of robotics, artificial intelligence and the increased understanding of plant physiology, what will the cherry orchard of the future look like? It was this question that led me to apply for a Nuffield Farming Scholarship. My study was to focus on production of sweet, fresh cherries and as part of the study I wanted to visit cherry farms around the world to understand what production techniques were currently being used, to look at production of other fruit and vegetable crops whose harvested had already been mechanised and finally to talk to researchers and machine developers to see what, what technologies are being developed for the future. For this I travelled to America, Holland, France, Italy, Germany and Chile. The generosity and kindness and openness of the people I met while travelling was humbling. It made me realise the similarities between the pressures farmers are facing worldwide. Around the world, cherry farmers have adopted their growing systems to suit their climate. However, in terms of harvesting in the field, I did not see any mechanical or robotic systems in use. All crops were hand harvested with seasonal labour. The only equipment utilised were buckets and ladders, similar to what my grandfather would have used. By contrast, the technology used in Cherry Packhouse is cutting edge, with millions invested in refrigeration, hydro cooling, box tippers, cluster cutting, packing lines and state-of-the-art photo sorting for size, colour, defects and softness, with the fruit progressing through the lines on water plumes. Why has the technology in the field not kept up with advance in the pack house? The simple answer is that cherry picking is possibly one of the hardest tasks to mechanise due to small fruit size, clustered fruit and dense foliage on a complex tree system. The harvesting process of numerous crops has been mechanised over the last 100 years, from arable crops, potatoes, wine grapes and even milk production. In my study I specifically looked at the mechanisation of sour cherries, strawberries, black currants and blueberries. Sour cherries and cherries for processing are commonly harvested with tree shakers which use vibration to dislodge the fruit, which is caught on a platform beneath the tree. These machines have not been adopted in the fresh sweet cherry production due to the high percentage of damage caused as the cherries fall through the tree. In the last five years, several robotic companies have endeavoured to mechanise strawberry picking. Robots are now capable of picking strawberries, however I do not believe the technology is currently commercially viable due to slow picking speeds and the high ratio of on-site engineers to robots. This technology is still in its infancy and will continue to improve, however the time scale for full commercialisation is unknown. Black currants have been harvested mechanically for over 40 years. The fruit is removed by vibration with hard plastic fingers before being conveyed to handling containers. Could similar vibration technology be used for cherries? As an alternative, modern blueberry harvesters use jets of air to dislodge the fruit. The key to success seems to be the reduction in fall distances to minimise the percentage of fruit damage. From my studies, I concluded there are two possible routes for the cherry house to be mechanised. The first option is individual fruit removals. If robots can be commercialised in strawberries, this technology can be easily transferred to the cherries. However, the robots will not be able to access the middle of the fruit tree. Therefore, cherries will need to be grown on a singular plane canopy system to create a wall of fruit which will make the fruit easy accessible for robots. The second option is a mass harvest system using vibration. To minimise bruising, fall distances have to be reduced to below one metre. Could a singular plane trellis system grown at 70 degrees be used with the fruit caught just below the trellis? The advantage of a mass harvest system could be significant cost savings of up to 40%. The disadvantage is that the majority of cherries will be stemless. For certain markets in the world, like Asia, a stem on cherry is a prerequisite. However, in Europe, over 5,000 tonnes of stemless picota cherries from Spain are successfully sold annually as a premium product. Neither option is currently available. However, I believe it is only a matter of time until somebody develops a growing and harvesting system for sweet, fresh cherries. My message to the UK cherry growers is to keep a watchful eye on the emergence of these new technologies and when considering the planting of new orchards, 
The growing system used should be easily adaptable to mechanical harvesting. And lastly, this has been an amazing experience. I'd like to thank my sponsor, Malcolm Isaac, and my friends and family for supporting me.